Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Pamela McClam, Realtor at DeHannis Real Estate Services in Waldorf, Maryland. Today I want to talk a little bit about closing and closing costs. I did an earlier video about settlements, but today I just wanted to break down what's involved in a closing. So what is a closing? A closing are fees and expenses associated with the purchase price of the home. And so when you get to closing, when you're ready as the buyer, you and the buyer, you and the seller are there, these are some of the, the fees that you can expect. And I do have a list here because I just wanted to make sure that I include some of the important things that involve closing costs. So closing costs can um, include the homeowners association transfer fees. That's if you buy a house and it has a HOA, then there may be some fees associated with transferring those documents from the seller to the buyer. They also it also might might include um, loan discount points that's prepaid interest on the loan. It could also include owner's title insurance. This protects the buyer in case there's something on the deed that uh, challenges the ownership of the home. There could be some liens or something. So you want to make sure that when you buy a um, house or a home, you want to make sure that that title and deed is clear. There are no loan, there are no liens against it. Nobody else is claiming to own that property. The origination fee, this covers the lender's administration costs to process the loan. And as you can see, there are a lot of things that are associated, a lot of costs that are associated with loans. There are all sorts of fees and expenses. Prepaid interest, some lenders will ask you to pay it. It is accrued interest between the closing date and um, your first mortgage payment. And so there you have another cost. Also, private mortgage insurance. Um, if this is required, it may be required if the buyer is paying less than 20% down, a 20% down payment on conventional loans. Uh, property taxes uh, may be required within 60 days of the purchase of the home. So, um, and then you have recordation fees, uh, survey fees, you might have transfer taxes, underwriting fees, and so forth. And so when you go to closing, you'll have uh, what's called a closing disclosure. This form is going to explain each and every fee, and it's going to show you exactly what you're paying for and where the money is going. Also, you may have some closing help or receive closing help from your seller. Uh, Typically, there may be closing help um, from your seller anywhere from anywhere from two to five percent. Of course, that is negotiate, negotiated at the stage of uh, contract offer and contract acceptance. And that's where you will um, negotiate your closing help from the seller. It's also important to remember to bring with you just some make sure you have access to cash, make sure you have access to money because anything, you know, can not, not go perfectly right when you're at a closing. And so you want to make sure that you have covered your basis as much as possible. Um, I know it's not always um, possible to be a hundred percent, but you want to get as close to a hundred percent as possible when you get to closing, because as you can see, there are all sorts of fees that are associated with it. And I'm just going to read to you a few more of the of the fees that may be associated. Um, I think we talked about property taxes, your transfer and recordation taxes. Um, you may not be responsible if you're first time home buyer in Maryland. You may not be responsible for paying all of those fees. If you're a first time home buyer, then the seller will pay all of the transfer and recordation um, fees. Um, for you, or if you have some sort of prearranged agreement, you may agree to pay 50, it may be a 50 50 split. Um, you know, it just depends on what you have written in your contract. So, those are some of the fees that are associated with, with closing. When you go to closing, a lot of documents you um, have to sign. And so you may want to take time and just read through them a little bit. You'll get those documents before you actually have to sign them. You will get the closing disclosure before that time. So you'll have a chance to go through it. And if you have any questions, you know, ask your real estate agent and your real estate agent will answer those questions or find the answer for you. And so if you have tuned into any of my videos, you know, I love to talk about vintage handbags because why? vintage handbags and real estate they go together in my mind 
And so today I did bring with me one of my vintage handbags. And this is a Louis Vuitton Speedy 30. And I believe they come in uh, several sizes. Um, you can get a Speedy 25, Speedy 30. This is a Speedy 30, Speedy 35, or Speedy 40. I like the 30 and 35 sizes because you can carry a lot in them. Uh, the very sturdy handbag. I bought this on the pre-loved market. This one, I believe, is... I meant to look at the date code before bringing her out here to show you. And she does have a date code here. And let me slip on my glasses and I'll be able to tell you how old she is. Okay, so I see the date code here, 1911. So that means that she was made, I believe, in 1991, uh, November 1991. I believe that's what that means here. Um, so remember when you purchase any Louis Vuitton bag, there's always going to be a date code and there's also going to be letters that represent where this, where the bag was uh, manufactured. She does have letters, um, but I don't know. I don't have my sheet in front of me, so I can't tell you where she was manufactured. Um, probably France or could have been Spain or could be USA because remember um, for a while there, the uh, United States was manufacturing Louis Vuitton handbags because there was such a high demand from the States and um, of course, overseas in France, they couldn't keep up with the demand. So they decided to build a company in the United States. And those bags will have a um, Louis Vuitton French, they're called French Company, because that was the name of the company in the United States. So this is a very lovely handbag. And of course, uh, by purchasing her on the pre love market, she's very dirty when I first got her, but I cleaned her canvas. I used leather cleaner. I also used the degreaser. It's up to you to what you want to use on your bags, but um, uh, the leather cleaner and degreaser did a good job of cleaning her. I also cleaned the lock. I bought this lock separately and I cleaned it with Brasso. And I bought this strap um, separately too. I had this strap in my collection. And so I just added her to the bag. And also I added a very nice Louis Vuitton charm, uh, bag charm, which I bought off the pre-love market. I believe I bought this one from Fashion File. And this is just a generic twilly that I like to put on there. I like to put little scarves and, you know, sometimes the little fur balls and stuff to, to kind of bring her out and dress her up. And so, so how, do, how does this handbag relate to uh, real estate? Well, uh, especially for investors, if you are an investor, you may buy um, some property and you may decide to fix that property up and you are going to look at the purchase price of that property, how much money you're going to need to fix her up and if you can resell it or not. Just like vintage handbags, real estate, all of it is resellable. You can put these, I can put this back on the market and I can probably get, you know, just about what I paid for her, which wasn't much. I didn't, I don't believe I paid, I paid maybe a little over $200 for her. And which is really, really bargain basement price in Louis Vuitton. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so if you are a shopper, um, you know, uh, I, I love pre-love um, because I just love old things. So I tend to buy off the pre-love market. And sometimes pre-love can be expensive too. But, um, you know, getting back to real estate, if you are an investor and you are looking to invest in property, then um, you want to decide where you want to decide how much money you want to put into the property. And if you're buying it to live in it, buying it to rent it out or flip it and resell it, then those are the kinds of things that you want to consider. And so that will end my segment today. And I am hoping that you are tuning into my channels because I'm going to try to bring real estate information to you as I run across it. And hopefully this information is helpful to you. Again, reach out to me on Facebook, buy or sell with Dehanas, D-E-H-A-N-A-S. Everyone stay safe, love your loved ones, and until we meet again, bye-bye.